Today, I'm going to tell you a story. The story of the miraculous recovery of a species nearly wiped out here. The story of the ingenious combination of both biology and psychology. The story of the MERS of Devil's Slide. Hey guys, I'm here at Devil Slide in Northern California. Let's get technical. Devil Slide is a place on the coast of San Mateo, a bit south of San Francisco. It's a promontory, which means it's elevated land which steeply drops into even lower land or water. Until it was relocated to this tunnel, this trail right here actually used to be a highway. People would actually drive next to these crazy steep rocks. A matter of fact, that's how Devil Slide got its name, because of the many huge rock slides that would happen on that road. So that's comforting. One of the best parts of Devil's Slide is it's home to tons of mind-blowing wildlife, from peregrine falcons to humpback whales to California sea lions to... common mers? Yeah, I know they may not seem as cool as peregrine falcons, but trust me, they definitely are as interesting, if not more so. See, before the 1980s, Devil's Slide was filled with tons of common mers. They'd all hang out on this rock, Devil's Slide Rock, also known as Egg Rock, which is the greatest name for a rock I think I've ever heard. In 1980, 2,900 mers resided at Devil's Slide Rock. So can you guess how many mers were there, say, just eight years later in 1988? Maybe it went up a bit to around 3,500. Maybe it went down a bit to around 2,500. Actually, it dropped to zero. There were no MERS at Devil's Slide Rock from 1988 to 1995. Granted, rangers occasionally saw a couple MERS here and there, but they never saw more than nine and never for a sustained period of time. Why did MERS suffer a local extinction? Two factors. First, from the late 70s to the mid 80s, many MERS died in gill nets from a nearby fishery. Second, in early 1986, an oil barge owned by the Apex Houston Company accidentally spilled 26,000 gallons of oil while traveling from San Francisco to Long Beach Harbor. This massive oil spill killed 9,900 birds in total, 6,300 of which were MERS. After the oil spill, the Apex Houston Company had to pay $6.4 million because of a settlement in a federal and state lawsuit. $4.9 million of that settlement, a little over 75%, went to restoring the local mer population. Or more specifically, it went to a council made up of the Yusufus, the Noa, and the Sudagufug. I thought saying just their acronyms would be faster and cleaner, but I'm now realizing that that's probably not the case. I've got a challenge for you. Let's say you work at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and you're just given $4.9 million to restore the mer population. What do you do? Maybe you raise a colony in a zoo and then slowly reintroduce them into the wild. Maybe you try your best to preserve the land and make it suitable for as many mers as possible. Well, the Usforce did none of that. They instead invested in mer decoys, CD players, and mirrors. They knew that mers were social animals, and that there were still plenty of mers in existence, they just weren't at Double Slide Rock. If the scientists could provide social cues to signal to the rest of the mers that Double Slide Rock is hopping, that Double Slide Rock is the place to be, they predicted that they could repopulate the area. This concept is known as social attraction, biology and psychology combined. So they scattered hundreds of decoy mers all along Double Slide Rock, featuring standing mers, inky Incubating mers, mer eggs, and mer chicks. I couldn't find pictures of the last two, so I drew them. <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. As I said, they also implemented three-sided mirrors, which also created the illusion that there were more mirrors on the rock, but they had the advantage of being able to capture motion. If a real mirror is on the rock and walking around, the mirrors would reflect that, making them seem even more realistic than decoys. Finally, the US Force added four speakers across the rock to simulate what an active mer colony would sound like. The recording they played was a Farallon National Wildlife Refuge in May 1995, and contained the sounds of thousands of mirrors. boop da boo boop da bee These are the layouts of where they place the thingies. The goal of all the social attraction equipment wasn't just to get MERS back on Devil's Slide Rock, but it was also to get the MERS mating. When a new MER came to the rock, it basically went down like this. Hey, what up? I see that there are a ton of MERS over here. Nah, they're just mirrors and decoys. It's just a prank, bro. Uh, <laughs> oh, you got me. Let's make some babies. So the big question now is, did they work? The answer? Oh yes, they worked so much better than expected. The social attraction equipment was placed on the rock in January 1996, and it took just one day for a mer to come back. Yes, it was just one mer, but remember, the rock had been barren for many, many moons before the social attraction equipment, so one bird was a big deal. The next day, four mers were reported, and it kept growing and growing. Here's a graph of the number of mers versus the date in 1996, mostly, and uh, can you guess where they implemented the social attraction equipment? 
Yeah, right there. Quick side note right here, this sharp drop-off at the end is a result of it being the end of Murr attendance for the season, so it wasn't like the Murrs were abandoning Devil's Slide Rock again, this was more than expected. The social attraction equipment worked so well that in just five years, the Usfwood reached their 10-year goal of 100 breeding pairs. They removed the social attraction equipment in 2004 because the colony became self-sustaining, and up to this day, Devil's Slide Rock's common Murr population is back to where it was before the local extinction. So do you want to utilize social attraction to restore a colony of Murrs? near you? Yes? Why? But seriously, let's pretend Elon Musk comes up to you on the street and he's like, yo, Alex, now that I'm done building a flamethrower, I've suddenly become very passionate about restoring local seabird populations. Can you help? And I can say, Elon, old boy, what an oddly specific request, but yes, yes I can. And after this bit, you can too. Here's six things researchers learned are important to have when implementing social attraction after studying it at Devil's Slide. I should probably think of a shorter title. One, the sooner you start social attraction after a local extinction, the better. You want to attract as many birds who are also members of the former colony as possible. Two, the best time to install social attraction equipment is before the breeding season. Make sure your birdies have enough time to come to the site and pick a partner before it's time to mate. In this case, January was picked because it's right after November and December when all the murs come back to Central California while leaving plenty of time, like several months, before the breeding season. Three, give your birds choices, as in make sure you have areas of low decoy density and high decoy density so the birds can pick which one they like best. Don't put tons of decoys everywhere or make them all equally far apart. You want to mix it up. Four, even in high decoy density groups, make sure you leave enough space for the birds to, well, actually come and live. If your rock is just filled with decoys and you leave no space for the actual birds, well, congrats, you got a rock full of decoys, my friend. Five, mirrors are helpful. I mean, this section of the study actually says provide mirrors and open spaces among decoys to enhance the apparent number and movement of birds, but all I get from that is mirrors are helpful. Six. It's almost like, it's almost like jazz hands. Six. Look at the density of where the birds used to nest and then try to match that with the decoys. The logic here is that previously dense spots on the rock should be dense with decoys to let birds and chicks who previously lived there know that they should return to those areas that, in the past, were quality. As a note to end on, here's a couple of the concluding sentences in the study documenting this whole thing. While social attraction equipment and monitoring efforts can be costly in some circumstances, this project has demonstrated its efficiency for seabird restoration purposes. Natural recolonization at Devil's Slide Rock probably would not have occurred for decades or centuries, if at all, without effective use of social attraction techniques. I know that MERS aren't the most clickbaity of topics, but I found this interesting, and if you did too, it would mean a lot if you subscribed, hit that like button, and shared this video. You can follow me on Twitter, Insta, and Snapchat at AlexUNickel. Thanks for watching, DFTBA, and explore on. I would like to give a huge thank you to M. Taylor for sponsoring this episode. If you ever wondered, Alex, where you get that dope shirt you're wearing in the video? M. Taylor is the place. M. Taylor is the best place to get custom dress shirts, jeans, suits, and even more. What they do is actually really amazing. Their app will measure you with your phone's camera and get measurements that are 20% more accurate than an actual tailor. We're living in the future. They sent me this phenomenal shirt and these awesome jeans, and I honestly couldn't be happier with both the quality and the fit. Visit mtaylor.com by clicking the link in the description and use the code technicality20 for 20% off your order. New year! It's 2018, I'm back from break, and I'm psyched to be making videos again. Technicality fans may notice there's something a bit different on my head or not on my head. That's right, I'll talk about the hat more in an upcoming Q&A episode sometime in the future. It's just coming out soon, so probably like five months. Until then, if you liked this video, you can check out the others on screen right now. Thanks to all my awesome patrons over at patreon.com slash technicality, especially these cool people right next to me right here. See y'all next time. That's a wrap! First video of the year! Huzzah! Let's make sure everything recorded properly.